What's up everyone? Deathwish back with another Warpath video. In this video, I'm going to share with you guys the best strategies to effectively and efficiently level up your base and your base buildings to gain an edge over the competition and to maximize your growth and development. Coming up. All right, so let's start here. So our command center is going to be kind of the heart of our whole operation and our base development and really our development as a player. When I started playing the game, this was a little bit different because there was not as many buildings and the leveling up process was just a little bit different. However, the same strategies and um, approach to the game is still the same, in my opinion. And I have seen a couple of different approaches. I'm going to give you guys my approach, and I'm going to and, and, and I'm going to explain a little bit of the other approaches I've seen and I've heard people talking about that I'm not a fan of, and I will explain why I'm not a fan of that as well. So. My idea behind leveling up a base is we're going to have to start with our command center. That's going to be the heart of everything that we're going to do moving forward as we develop and progress throughout the game. And here's why. Because your base, I'm sorry, your command center is going to be the base, The basically it's going to be the baseline for the max upgradability level of all the other base buildings that you've got. Meaning, if your command center is only level 25, you're not going to be able to get your barracks or your air force hangar or your um, RSS, your uh, resource building, sorry, I'm, I abbreviated RSS buildings, but resource buildings to level 32. If your command center is only level 25, you can only get your other base buildings to level 25. Everything is going to basically mirror what your command center is, if that makes sense. So we've got to prioritize getting that command center up to level 32 as fast as possible. But one thing that has changed from when I started till now is we've got to worry about and factor in our base building index. And the reason that is is because we've got to meet a certain uh, amount of base building index to be able to continue to progress and to level up our uh, command center. So here's what I mean. So once we get our command center to a certain level, before we can get it to that next level, we're going to have to meet a minimum base building index. So what we're going to have to do is go in and figure out which buildings we want to prioritize to level up to get us to that next threshold of being able to level up our command center and meet that minimum building index requirement. So again, there's a couple of different strategies here you can take. This is my strategy, and this is what I feel like has, has been really great for me. It's worked really well, and I, I just think this is all around the best approach to leveling up your base and your base buildings. In my opinion, I always like to start with the base development buildings, meaning the engineering center, the research center, the reserve barracks, the alliance liaison, all of those things. I'm not saying we just totally neglect the other things. However, we've got to be able to get our foundation built solid, and then we can build off that. So out of all of our base development buildings, the number one most important building on my list is going to be our engineering center. And this is why, because to level up all of the other buildings, we need not only resources, but we need building materials. And the faster we can, the, the more building materials we can develop and the faster we can develop them, the faster we can level up the other buildings later on as we continue to progress. All right. So. The engineering center is extremely important, and here's why. So we're going to go into our engineering center and take a look here. The higher the level of our engineering center, the more materials we can put in the queue to be built at a time. And now there's a couple of different things that factor into this, not only your engineering level, but you can get more from um, VIP levels, things like that. But we're just going to talk strictly about the engineering center today. As you guys can see, I've got a total of 120 materials that I can build are put into the queue at once and they'll just continue to roll through as each of them as the time works itself down so if, for example for cement here it takes me just a little under 10 minutes to make or to produce one thing of cement right so i can put 120 in the queue and it'll work its way down every 10 minutes or so all right so not only that the higher level the higher the level of our engineering center 
the faster we can produce those materials too. So it's going to reduce the amount of time it takes to produce those materials. Hence, we're going to be able to develop our other buildings faster as we increase the level of our engineering center. The second most important on the list here is going to be our research center. Okay, Our research center is extremely important because of a couple of different things. All right, Our research center is going to, once it's level 32, it's going to increase the total research speed boost by 130%. And a lot of you guys might not be thinking that's a whole lot, but that is a ton, especially for some of you older players that are probably into the later part of your military tech, things like that. You know what I'm talking about. Some of the research uh, research times get pretty crazy. Like there's, there's a couple in there that are like 132 plus days. So when you get up to those researches, 130% is, we'll take it. We'll take everything we can get to shorten the amount of time we've got. The next on my list is going to be an importance of our base development base development buildings is going to be our reserve barracks, okay? And here is why. Our reserve barracks is extremely important because after all, we've got to continue to remember we're playing a war game, right? And to play a war game and to have fun in a war game, you've got to fight and participate in the wars that are taking place. In order to do that, or to do that for very long and to be very effective at it, you've got to stay in the fight for as long as possible. The more reserve troops you've got, the longer you can stay in that fight and the more benefit you are to your alliance. When you guys get your reserve barracks up to level 32, it's going to give you a total of 5,300 reserve troops. You need every reserve, I promise I'm speaking from experience, you need all of the reserves you possibly can. That is going to help you stay in the fight as long as possible. All right. It's also going to, when it is level 32, increase the recovery speed of your reserve troops by 560%. It goes back to the conversation we just had. The longer we can stay in the fight, the better it is, right? And if we can recover those reserves as fast as possible, that's going to get us back into the fight as fast as possible. So we want every advantage there we can. The next, the final, but not... Uh, I'm not saying this is any less important than the other ones, but this is going to be fourth on my list in base development building importance is going to be the Alliance Liaison. This is important, not as vital as the others, but this is still very important, especially as you guys to continue as you guys continue to progress through your research and your different tech trees and you start to get into some of those longer research times. This is where the Alliance Liaison comes into play because once your Alliance Liaison is level 32, it's going to increase the total number of research assists you can receive from your alliance members by 25. You can get a max of 25 alliance member assists on your research once your alliance liaison is level 32. So it's not vital. It's not game changing. It is very helpful, but that's kind of where it's why I've got it placed on my fourth in my fourth slot here and uh, on base development buildings because it isn't it's helpful but it's not game changing right if you don't have reserves you can't fight that can be game changing that can be the difference between an alliance winning and losing a war right however many assists you get on research I mean that helps you but it's not a benefit to the alliance and things like that so it's not as important still something we want to get taken care of but not as important all right the next focus that we're going to talk about here is going to be our barracks, all right? And I see a lot of folks really kind of struggle here and make some, some, some mistakes unknowingly. What I see a lot of people do when they are leveling up their barracks and their Air Force hangars and things like that is they ping pong around from one to the other to the other. For example, they'll get one barracks to level 32. I'm sorry, not 32, we'll just call it 28 for the example. They'll get one barracks to level 28, and then they'll go to their barracks number two and get that to 28, and then barracks number three to 28, barracks number four to 28, and so on and so forth, and they're never really maximizing one at a time, and there's a lot of benefits to doing one at a time that people are missing because they're ping-ponging around. And here's what I mean. We need to, and this is the order in which we want to prioritize our ground force barracks first, even over our Air Force hangars, okay? When you guys are building your barracks, you want to focus on your main field fighting tank unit barracks first. You want to get that to level 32 before any of the other barracks, okay? Do not worry about level the other ones up as, as little as possible to the do them as minimally as possible until you get 
barracks number one, which is going to be your main tank unit barracks to level 32 first, okay? And then from there, you want to go to barracks number two, and that's going to be the one that has your main artillery unit in it. You want to get that barracks then up to level 32 before you focus on any of the others. After that's done and that's taken care of, then we want to focus on our secondary tank unit barracks. For a lot of you guys, it's a super heavy. Some of you guys, it might be a medium and a light you've got paired together. Whatever your combination of units are, you want to focus on getting your secondary tank unit barracks up to level 32 third. After that, your fourth barracks that you want to get up to level 32 needs to be your secondary artillery or anti-tank gun unit barracks. You want to get that up to level 32 before you finish the last and the final fifth one off, okay? The reason it is so important you guys do not ping pong around and you guys focus on one at a time until it is level 32 and you also really should follow the order that I just said on how to level up your barracks or which barracks to level up first, meaning do your main tank first, then your main artillery, then your secondary tank, then your secondary artillery or anti-tank gun unit, is because when a barracks is level 32, it increases the training speed by 250%, and it also increases the firepower and durability of the unit inside of those barracks by 15% each, meaning you're gonna get, gonna get an additional 15% firepower and 15% durability to that specific unit. When you guys ping pong around and go from one barracks to one barracks to one barracks but never max any of them out on level, you're missing out on these buffs. And these buffs are extremely valuable and in a lot of ways can be the deciding factor on if you win a fight or if you lose a fight, right? And again, the training speed increase of up to 250% is, is, I mean, it's vital. Again, it goes back to the conversation we had a minute ago. The faster you can get back into the fight, the longer you can stay in that fight, the more effective you're going to be, all right? So once we get the barracks taken care of, and I know Air Force is really popular with a lot of you guys, I highly suggest that you guys make sure you prioritize your ground force first, okay? You've got to get those barracks taken care of. Once you're effective on the ground, then you can dominate the sky. But if you don't dominate the ground, you're going to have a real hard time surviving and being much of a help to your, to your alliance long term. So get those barracks taken care of, and then you can shift over here to your Air Force hangars. And the same idea and the same concept applies here to these Air Force hangars, okay? Do not, please, ping pong around, right? I literally had a conversation with, just, with a guy just a couple of days ago that was working on leveling his third barracks up to level 30, but he didn't have a single one of them level 32. So if he would have taken all the resources and all the building materials he had used to level all of them up to level 30, he could have had one of them already level 32 in, the, uh, the, in his secondary hangar, or his second hangar, probably pretty close to level 32. But instead he has three that are level 30, right? And the same buffs that you got with your ground force barracks you get with your air force hangars. You get... 5 per, or 15 percent firepower and durability buffs on each unit inside of those hangars when it's level 32 and when you ping pong around like that you're missing those buffs and it's really hurting people and they're not taking that into consideration so please take that into consideration and level one building up at a time all right all right our next and final topic coming up is we're going to talk about our city walls, our watchtower, and our AA gun, and how it can help you when defending your base and increase the length of time you can stay in the fight. So stay tuned for that, but first, like this video and hit that subscribe button so you guys never miss a future video. And if you guys have any questions about anything regarding your base buildings or what you should level up first, let me know in the comments below. I know it can kind of get confusing, and I've had some of these uh conflicts with myself too. For example, let's say we're I'm working on a barracks, right? And I'm also working on military tech. Well, it's like both of them cost a lot of uh, a lot of resources. Which one should I prioritize? Things like that. So if you guys have any questions, anything like that, shoot me a comment. Drop me a comment below and, and we'll talk about it. We'll see if we can't get you helped and taken care of. And I'll give you guys some advice that I've kind of worked through and some of the mistakes that I've made that maybe you guys can avoid making. And uh, that'll help you guys progress and develop a little bit faster and more effectively than uh, even I did. Um, 
So the, the next thing I want to talk about here on our list is going to be our uh, City Walls, Watchtower, and AA Gun. Out of these three things, the AA Gun is by far, in a way, the most important of them all. And here's why, because when your AA Gun is level 32, okay, you get up to three additional grids of coverage when your units are garrisoned and defending your base, all right? So for example, your tank unit, let's go over here, let's go to our tank unit. Um, so when we are looking at our tank unit here, it's my medium tank, right? You can, you go, oh, shoot, you, we go down here, you guys can see effective range, right? It's two grids. So just standing alone how it is, okay, if we're not, if we don't take any AA gun or anything like that factored into consideration here, if we're strictly just talking about my medium tank, on defense, my medium tank can cover only two grids max, right? My artillery unit though, here let's go back in here and let's take a look. My artillery unit, if we go here, effective range is four grids, right? So different units have different ranges of coverage and of ability that they can defend. However, once your AA gun is level 32, you can increase all of your units by up to three grids, but it maxes out at five grids. So you can't take an artillery unit and then add three more grids onto it. It won't work. It won't give you a, like seven grids of coverage, right? It, you, can get a, uh, you can get up to five, but it caps itself off at five. So the most grid coverage you can have for any unit, no matter what unit it is, no matter what officer you've got paired on it, is going to be up to five grids. But it's going to help you tremendously when you're on defense and you're having to defend your base. So that way you can have the effectiveness of all of your units defending your base. Meaning if you're on defense and you don't have that AA gun leveled up, right, your your tanks can't help you on defense really for artillery units that may be four or five grids out right they won't be any effective to you but if that aa gun is level 32 then they can hit up to that far out and they can really be effective and you guys for reference uh can see here these little outer rings on my base show the coverage of the units that are defending okay so aa gun out of the three things that we're talking about here are vital. AA gun is the most important out of the city walls, the watchtower, and the AA gun. The AA gun is by far and away the most important thing that you need to prioritize. The next on our list is going to be our city walls, okay? Go over here. Our city walls are going to increase our base durability. Now, for a lot of you guys that have been around for a little bit, you guys are competing in these conquest events, things like that, and you're also competing against players that are extremely developed, both unit-wise and tech-wise. Yeah, and even officers for that matter. You guys know that when you've got five army groups surrounding your base, it doesn't really matter what your base durability is. You're basically going to be gone in a minute or less anyway. However, for you, you newer players, right, that maybe you're still competing in level one, level two, or level three cities, you guys are facing players that are not as developed or maybe not as proficient with army groups and things like that. So your base durability really does matter. It does matter in general. It all really does. Even when you're facing these big swarms of army groups, it just you just don't last very long, but it's still better to have more durability than not. All right, so when your city walls are increased to level 32, you get up to 200 million durability. It's actually higher than that, but that's just for simplistic purposes we're going to call it a little little north of 200 million base durability now that can also increase through things like tech and stuff like that but we're start talking about strictly base development right now um, so we'll cover more technology stuff um, and what to prioritize and things like that in another video but strictly just talking about base development here your city walls are going to help you, especially if you're still competing in level one, two, and three cities tremendously. You want to try to get that to level 32 after the AA gun. The next thing in our in line here on our list is going to be our watchtower. Now, watchtower is it, it's great if you eventually get it leveled up, but it's not a priority. And here's why. Okay, if we go over here to our watchtower. Okay, once it's level 32, it'll give us an increase of a little more than six million base firepower may seem like a lot on paper, but it really doesn't help and it really doesn't matter, okay? You guys will, you guys, as you continue to progress and grow in this game, you guys will, will find out that um, the base firepower doesn't really do much. 
uh, again, kind of like the city walls, you can, through tech, increase your base durability. Through tech, you can also increase your base firepower. And uh, once you increase your tech quite a bit, sure, it starts to help just a little bit, but it's, it's not important or vital enough for you to worry about prioritizing the watchtowers. When you get to it, get to it, but don't sacrifice, I guess what I'm trying to say here, is don't sacrifice leveling up a barracks or an Air Force hangar or any of your base development buildings for a watchtower because those are way more important to your growth and development than that watchtower is ever going to be. All right. So I hope this guy, I hope this video helped for you guys. Uh, it kind of explained some different things. Um, like I said, I think this video can be very applicable to um, not only newer players but older players because I've had conversations with a lot of seasoned players that you know are taking the wrong approaches to these base development processes and they're really kind of limiting their growth and their development as a player and hurting themselves uh, and they don't a lot of times even realize it so hopefully this kind of cleared up some of that for you guys and it gives you a better idea and a clearer understanding of how to level up your buildings what buildings to prioritize when leveling up things like that if you guys enjoyed this video and you guys want to watch more of these videos that will help give you an edge over other Warpath commanders, then click on the video that's going to pop up on the screen at the end of this video. And I appreciate all of you guys watching, and I will see you guys on the next one.